Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. Make, make a, make a, uh, a good, good lucha, lucha thing. That is just a fact of life. What's up, folks? BQ here, and this is the number one place to be if you are an Impact Wrestling fan. If the most pro-Impact channel on YouTube sounds good to you, then please consider subscribing. I've got two things to talk about, Chris Jericho's rumored appearance at Bound for Glory being one of them, and the details, and I know this is coming several days late, but I talked about the other two reports that came out, so it's only fair that I close it off, but the details on Impact's meeting with WWE. This is my third time discussing the meetings, as I said, and all we could do is read dirt sheets and speculate. Now we've got some concrete information. Stick around to the end of the video. I will let you know how I would personally fantasy book a potential Chris Jericho debut if I were Impact Creative. My predictions usually tend to be spot on or not even close, but I like to think most of them are practical. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to comment how you would book Jericho potentially appearing at Bound for Glory. Shout out to Colby Cooper on Facebook for posting a lot of this information in the Impact Nation group on Facebook. That is the number one place to be on Facebook for the Impact fans, so make sure to check that out. Anyway, first, first up to bat, Ed Norholm was on the sitting ringside podcast with Dave Penzer. Ed relays that the meeting was about the two sides opening up dialogue, getting face to face so they can establish a regular dialogue with each other in the future. Now, there was a discussion about potentially more content licensing and face it. There was a financial gain for impact when they did this before. And as I previously said, they set their single day record for the Global Wrestling Network downloads when a mention of the GWN appeared on the WWE Network. Of course, my problem, I've talked about it ad nauseum with the GWN, is that it's geared towards the fans of TNA and not towards the fans of Impact. Yes, the TNA years had a larger fan base, but once you get that subscription, what is the action step? If WWE programming drives people to the GWN and they sign up, then what? What is next? Now, Scott D. Moore was a guest with Dennis Farrell and P.D. Williams on the Wrestling Perspective podcast, and he said that WWE knows that they're in a new age and that it's a new company. It's not Jeff Jarrett's TNA anymore, basically. He did make a point of saying Vince wasn't even at the meeting, so why would they be talking about selling the company? Bottom line, though, it will do well for Impact's image to get along with WWE, and if they can do that, Hopefully that's going to uh, save face with some of the fans who still don't want to give the company a chance despite them doing so many good things on their programming. Okay, let's get into the meat and potatoes here really quick. According to the Barn Burners No Holds Barred podcast, Chris Jericho is tentatively scheduled to make an appearance at Bound for Glory. They also said to expect one or two more additional surprises at BFG. I think the fans deserve surprises considering this is a live show, obviously, in the last few pay-per-views haven't had any surprises. And stuff on television, even though they do book a pretty unpredictable show, more often than not, it gets spoiled for us real fans. So because we have to deal with those spoilers so much, I think this time around, I think we deserve to get some surprises. So I can see why they would let the Jericho rumor slip, because that's a buzz generator. He can show up unannounced at All In or New Japan, but let's face it, for Impact, it's good to generate the buzz ahead of time. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't show up at all with everything being leaked, though. But if he does, how does he show up? How does it happen? Now, we've talked about the Eli Drake open challenge and Rich Swan needed a tag team partner. But now it seems that Eli Drake challenged a New York native. And then Rich Swan has already uh, chosen the Mac as his partner. So he's definitely not going to appear at any of those. And I didn't think he was going to anyway. There's no program with Eli Drake, so why would he answer the challenge? That's, you know, I'm talking about fantasy booking here. And fantasy booking can be fun, but you can't be unrealistic about it. He wasn't going to answer Eli Drake's open challenge. He has no reason to. You have to remember, Chris Jericho is not going to sign on just to sign on. He's not going to work with random people that he has no reason to have a program with. So if anything, I think he appears much like Cody did years ago. So how would I fantasy book this? I hate fantasy booking because too many people get disappointed when it doesn't come true, but we can have fun with it. There's a difference between having fun fantasy booking and thinking it's really going to happen and then getting pissed off when it doesn't. So do you guys remember how at All In the lights went out and Chris Jericho basically appeared dressed as Pentagon Jr. and then tacked Kenny Omega? So what I envision happening, albeit it might be a little difficult to pull off, would be something very similar. Callahan and OBE, first of all, beat Cage and the Lucha Brothers. Now, two things to look out for if my prediction is going to happen. Does Pentagon Jr. take the pin? 
Number one. And number two, what is Dave Christ wearing in the match? What's his attire? Okay. So here we go. They win. They celebrate the victory. Lights go out. And there is Pentagon Jr. again. However, Sammy says, oh, hell no. I know what's going on. Runs up and beats the living shit out of Pentagon. Finally sits him down. Finally unmasks him. Pulls it off. However, it's not Pentagon. It's actually Dave Christ. Much like how we got teleported on Impact. Basically, you know, that same story. Teleported into the uh, the outfit. So he ends up dressed like Pentagon while getting his ass beat. And at that point, the lights may go out again. Or, or they may not. But then the grand entrance happens with Jericho. Theme song and all. Now, Chris Jericho isn't going to run through the crowd like Sue Young or Hanaya the Huntress did when they were attacking Rosemary. He, he's really above doing it that way. So I'd keep an eye on the cameraman or any other civilians at ringside who could potentially take off a costume and be exposed as Jericho as well. But I think it's going to be a grand entrance with music and all. I don't think it's going to be a some kind of sneak attack. But even if they do something creative, it's Chris Jericho. So keep in mind, it has to be logical. There's a lot of very illogical fantasy booking here, but when it comes to Jericho, it has to make sense. He has to have a reason to be involved in that program, and it has to be logical. Hey, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Check out the video below for more Impact Wrestling-related content. This is the Impact Lounge.